OK, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Chinese New Year Festival Business Briefing um, run by Edinburgh Tourism Action Group and supported by Harriet Watt University's Scottish Confucius Institute for Business and Communication. Various people will continue to join us during the session, which is going out live on uh, uh, Microsoft Teams Live. Uh, we're using a different format to uh, Zoom this morning, so please bear with us as we manage things behind the scenes. Uh, Alice and Martin and myself are, have been on a steep learning curve for learning the technicalities of Teams Live over the last day, but hopefully you'll bear with us. So uh, we've got presentations from the three of us, and also if you've got any questions during the session, please use the Q&A uh, buttons and we will get to the Q&A section at the end. Um, the the, the uh, meeting is being recorded this morning, so we'll make that available afterwards for any uh, for anyone that missed it or colleagues that you would feel useful to send the link on to and we'll circulate that after the session. So without further ado, uh, we'll move on. So Alice, could you queue up the next slide, please? So our agenda for this morning is relatively straightforward. Uh, we'll probably run for about 40 minutes or so. Um, as I've already said, my name's Ian Baxter. I'm the director of the Confucius Institute for Business and Communication at Harriet Watt University. And we're delighted to be sponsoring the uh, Edinburgh's uh, Chinese New Year Festival again this year for the third year. It's going to be slightly different. Uh, I'm not, uh, I could use the words unprecedented, um, uh, but uh, that gets used at the start of every meeting. But we'll, uh, uh, we're hoping to, to use the opportunity around the Chinese New Year Festival to help rebuild and recover and celebrate coming out of a bit of a dark time during the winter. So the agenda for this morning, I'm just going to say a few words about our support and our plans for the New Year celebration, one of our activities. Then I'll pass over to Alice Her, the Chinese social media manager for ETAG, one of the project managers, to talk about, uh, to give an update on China Ready and uh, Chinese New Year traditions. And then we'll pass on over to Martin Reynolds, uh, the project manager for uh, the China Ready stream of the ETAG activity, to give a recap over the Chinese New Year 2020 and then look ahead to what we're uh, going planning and what we're hoping for you to all get involved in in 2021. And then a chance for Q&A at the end. So just a brief note about uh, our involvement. We uh, got involved in through discussions with ETAG uh, about three years ago now. Um, we saw that there were lots and lots of events going on in a slightly disparate way across the city centre, cultural institutions and retail and businesses and hotels all beginning to celebrate Chinese New Year in different ways. And, with, and in discussions with the team at ETAG, uh, we thought wouldn't it be great to bring all of this together to in a more coordinated way to have a citywide Chinese New Year celebration. And our role at the Confucius Institute is to introduce people to different aspects of China, Chinese language, Chinese business and culture. And that's our sort of public engagement role. We're one of five, five Confucius Institutes across Scotland. Uh, there's one at the University of Edinburgh, one at Glasgow University, one at Strathclyde and one up at Aberdeen. And we work in a similar way to the way that the British Council works overseas, but we work um, promoting opportunities to engage with Chinese uh, culture, language, arts and business and to build bridges between the uh, two countries. And with our focus at Harriet Watt University on, on business and communication, uh, one of the areas that we've been supporting is the tourism sector and working with our great colleagues and friends at ETAG and with Scottish Enterprise and with others involved in the tourism sector across Edinburgh and Scotland to uh, support engagement with China and getting businesses China ready. And it fits absolutely with the with the ETAG China Ready strand supporting business development and tourism development in Edinburgh for that really important uh, section of visitors and indeed of uh, residents and students uh, who uh, are um, uh, who are engaging with 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 China. 
Um, so our uh, role this year is again to support the uh, Chinese New Year Festival um, with e with our colleagues at ETAG. And one of our own activities that we're going to do this year is to uh, support the development of a an art installation project, which we're very excited about. So we're just giving a little teaser for it uh, just now. We're working with a Canadian artist, Ian Kirkpatrick, and we're move, about to move into the year of the ox. And Alice will tell you a bit more about that in due course. Um, but one of the things we thought would be fun to do would be given the, the synergies between the uh, Highland cow and the uh, ox, to if we could do a, a sort of a pop art mashup of ox and Highland cow to uh, to see if we can uh, sort of create an interesting art installation with and working with the artist who's engaging with uh, learning about Chinese culture and engaging with Chinese culture to develop ideas around um, the, the the sort of the, the symbolism and the iconography of Chinese New Year. Uh, and there are some pictures of some examples of his work uh, that, that are on the screen just now. And uh, we're looking forward to working with colleagues at Visit Scotland and hopefully display the artwork in the eye centre, the visitor information centre up on the Royal Mile. And this will hopefully act as a bit of a hub for the starting point for activities uh, for those limited physical activities that we'll be able to do. So uh, we're hugely excited about supporting the ETAG team for the Chinese New Year. And without further ado, I'll hand on to Alice. Thank you, Ian. Um, good morning, everyone. I am Alice He. I am the Chinese, Chinese social media manager at ETAG China Ready Initiative. And I've been running the official Weibo and WeChat account for Edinburgh um, for over four years now. Um, and I'm also running all the multi-channel online campaign for Edinburgh towards the Chinese market. So, um, Today, I'm delighted to be here and to update you about what, what we have been doing in 2020. Um, as we all know, um, 2020 has been very, very difficult for the tourism section. Um, and so in the same time, we don't, um, we didn't welcome um, as much Chinese visitors as we usually have. Um, but despite the circumstances, we've been doing loads of things behind the scenes and to keep communicate with our um, Chinese audience. Um, so um, basically in January, we have um, achieved number five and number seven position for um, 2019 in the global WeChat Weibo rankings, um, which makes Edinburgh the number one uh, destination Chinese social media channel in Europe. Um, also, uh, we have hosted um, the Chinese New Year Festival uh, in partnership with Burns and Beyond, as um, we were lucky to have the Chinese New Year um, begin in the same day with uh, Burns Night. Um, so uh, we're going to recap um, the Chinese New Year 2020 later on. And um, also, we were using that opportunity to um, to host a nationwide Chinese student ambassador campaign. We have uh, run a competition in the UK targeting all the UK based Chinese students. As you know that um, there are more than 120,000 um, Chinese students across the UK and this year the number is even higher. So we, we were running the campaign to select for uh, very, very talented Chinese students to come over to Edinburgh uh, for a trip and in Chinese during Chinese New Year and Burns Beyond. And they've, they have all created uh, brilliant content for us as well. Um, and in March, we have uh, started a Chinese cultural training working group in partnership with the Confucius Institute at the University of Edinburgh and uh, with support from um, Scottish Enterprise and um, uh, Visit Scotland. Um, we were, we are, we've teamed up together and to de develop this kind of uh, Chinese cultural training toolkit. And the toolkit will be available uh, for all of you to use um, in 2021 um, before for um, or when the international tourism uh, start to reco uh, recovery. 
and there will be a, a series of 16 different themed short videos uh, for you to um, to do the internal training to uh, towards your um, frontline frontline stuff and um, every um, stuff that you think will get benefit from the toolkit. Um, and in August, um, I have joined um, the University of Edinburgh online pre-departure briefing events um, towards um, 350 Chinese students, uh, prospective Chinese students. Um, as you may know that um, at the moment, the university is still doing, um, may, ma the majority of the classes are still um, uh, delivered online. So uh, some of the Chinese students decided to stay in China at the moment, but there are a lot of them um, have already arrived in Edinburgh and started to explore in the city and enjoy their, their life here. Um, so we've done the briefing events to, um, to introduce Edinburgh and things to do, where to go. Um, and after the event, uh, I have created a dedicated student WeChat group, uh, which have five students uh, member in the group. Um, so this is our direct, our uh, direct communication uh, tool with all the students um, and they are all very young and engaging and enthusiastic about the city. Um, and in September, um, we have done the first ever live stream, um, live stream session at the National Museum Scotland. Um, that was a Harry Potter themed uh, live stream and it went really really well. Um, we have we we have had over um, 86,000 um, viewers or watch the session and they're all very engaging. Uh, we have also delivered the second live stream session at the Scotch Whiskey Experience in November um, which has also worked really well. Uh, Livestream is a new tool we've been using to keep communicate with our audience both in the UK and in China. Um, as in November, uh, we have uh, we were very, very uh, excited to launch the first ever Mandarin language student guidebook to Edinburgh. Um, this is something we've been um, planning for, for for a while now, and um, it's finally launched. And um, 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 within a week, we've got over a thousand downloads. Um, and this is a, a, just a very um, a very uh, interactive um, online a to, um, student guide so the student can easily download the, the guidebook on their phone and um, the guidebook includes all kinds of content about the city um, like itineraries, um, top attractions and uh, dining tips and um, tips for accommodation and um, transportation or sort of use, useful and practical information for the students and their parents and their, uh, and their friends to learn about the city even before they arrive to Edinburgh. So um, this would be something we will keep doing in the future. So uh, we will we will be able to uh, to do an annual update as well in the in the future years. And um, as of as of now, we have um, exceeded um, ninety six thousand followers and uh, over two hundred and three uh, thirty thirty three million content views on Edinburgh's official Weibo and WeChat. Um, and I'm glad to say we we are remain the number one um, DMO channel um, in Europe. Um, and also as as for last week, our Weibo was uh, once again number one in the world. Um, so this, uh, these are all the work we've been done behind the scene and um, it's, it's, although it's been really, really difficult, but we've been um, doing our best to uh, promote Edinburgh on your behalf and, um, and I'm glad to let you know that um, our followers and our visitors are really, really keen to come to Edinburgh. Um, student is just one example and uh, because I have the privilege have the, um, to have the direct communication with lots of followers, I can see how eager they want to, to come to visit Edinburgh for the first time or come again um, as they all love the city and uh, feel Edinburgh a very, very uh, completely um, attractive destination for them to visit. And so next I'm going to talk about Chinese New Year. Um, Chinese New Year uh, 2021. Um, so here are the key information you need to know about Chinese New Year 2021. First of all, um, why is the date 
different every year is because um, the Chinese New Year is actually based on the lunar calendar. So um, it also called Spring Festival or Lunar New Year. Um, and it, it is also uh, celebrated uh, widely in the world, not only in China, but also in many um, uh, Asian countries or any country with Chinese population. Uh, you will see a big celebration in, in the US and in Australia, in Canada, so all kinds of places. And uh, in the UK, uh, there are also uh, lots of celebrations around um, cities like London, Manchester, um, Dublin. Um, so um, it is not only about China and um, we are glad to we're glad to combine the, the idea of the year of the uh, of the ox um, to twist it as a, in the Scottish way um, as the year of the coup and this year it will begin on begins on the Friday 12th of February just two days before Valentine's Day perfect timing isn't it and um, the celebrations between um, our New Year's Eve um, is um, is which is Chuxi um, and it will be the, uh, the 11th of February and the celebration would continue from the New Year's Eve until the Lantern Festival, which is the 26th of February. But the, the three major day, um, the two major days um, would be the New Year's Eve, 11th of February and uh, New Year Day, New Year's Day. Um, the 12th of February and the, the, th the third important date would be the Lantern Festival, 26th of February. And um, in China, there will be a one week long public holiday um, between the New Year's Eve um, and 17th of February. Um, people would use the, um, the holiday to, to travel back home or they would be, um, they will be traveling uh, with families and friends uh, to, into other cities in China um, because at the moment the international travel is not um, currently available. So um, I would assume lots of um, people would travel domestically uh, during Chinese New Year. And um, uh, the, the major idea behind Chinese New Year is very similar like Christmas, is about family reunion. It's time for you to go home, no matter how far away you are at the moment. Chinese New Year is a time you, 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 you have to go home um, to, to reunion with your family and to get spoiled by your parents and also to, to share all the exciting things happening in your life um, during the year. And because lots of uh, like billions of Chinese people would travel home, um, Chinese New Year is also the largest human migration in the world at the moment. Just imagine billions of people, they would um, travel in, in China from all kinds of um, transportation. And um, um, we do have loads of customs and traditions um, for Chinese New Year, but bear in mind that the customs and traditions uh, will be very different uh, across China, uh, from the north to, to the south, from the west to the east. Um, each area would have their own special traditions and customs, um, but the, the key concept is the same, like people would send in good wishes to others and uh, uh, we, we will give away red envelopes to um, to our kid and to the elder, uh, elder uh, elderly person in the family. Um, so. Again, it is very similar like Christmas. It's all about family, love and celebration. So here's um, I have listed all the similar things uh, between Christmas and Chinese New Year. Like Chinese New Year celebrated overseas, Christmas is also very widely celebrated in China. Um, although we don't have um, we, I would say that the, the modern Chinese population, they are not uh, following uh, all the Christmas traditions like we do here in the UK, but Christmas is a, it's very, now has become a very important um, festival in, in, in lots of big cities in China at the moment. Uh, you will see loads of Christmas decorations in those kind of huge shopping mall or coffee shop or just um, a, a tiny uh, boutique store. And uh, you, will, you will see young people, um, they would uh, prepare Christmas gifts 
to their to their friends, to their loved ones, um, and they would some sometimes they would celebrate together with a Christmas meal. So um, if you go to China uh, during Christmas, you won't feel uh, alone or you won't feel like you're in the, in a foreign country. Um, and so what we want to do here is the same. Um, we we would love to to celebrate um, a, a very um, festive. Um, Chinese New Year in here in Edinburgh in the Scottish capital. Um, it is so like Christmas, Chinese New Year is also uh, the most important and widely celebrated festival in China. It's about family reunion and um, as uh, the same as we have Christmas tree and um, uh, all the ornaments um, in, in the flat, we would have loads of festive decorations like Chun Lian um, or like uh, window stickers and Chinese paper cutting stickers um, everywhere in the room during Chinese New Year as well. And um, um, for during during Christmas, we would have this kind of big meal big feast um, and same as Chinese New Year. We would have um, loads of good foods on the table and for the whole family to enjoy together. And there would be different food traditions, like something you have to, you would expect for, for every Christmas. We, we also have something to expect um, for every Chinese New Year. Um, and I'm sure that the, the, the best food in the world uh, for Christmas and for Chinese New Year are the same, are the, um, the your mom's cooking, am I right? Um, and um, in here we greet everyone like Merry Christmas and in China we also would greet everyone which is Happy New Year. And I'm going to teach you some uh, really easy and short phrase uh, later on as well. Um, here we have Santa to, um, to to have a list of good kids and naughty kids and um, in uh, and to give away gifts um, to, to, to everyone. And in China we have um, Cai Shen, which is the god of wealth. Uh, we would pray to him and for him to um, to give us like more money and uh, a better future. Um, here in the UK we are uh, we would give um, everyone. Um, every loved one um, gifts. You would prepare like nice gifts and wrap them uh, very lovely um, and to give away to your family and friends. And in China, we would, uh, the main thing is uh, red envelopes. We would put, normally we would put brand new cash into the red envelopes and uh, the parents will give uh, their kid the red envelopes and um, um, the the young adults will give um, their grandparents red envelopes, so all kinds of tradition. But uh, in the same time, we will give away gifts to our loved ones uh, in this uh, alongside with the red envelopes. And nowadays, with all the mobile technology, um, despite um, sometimes we are we are very far away from from our family, we can still send digital virtual red envelopes with with, with real money in it um, to to our family and friends. So although I will be stay in Edinburgh for the Chinese New Year in 2021, I will still be able to give my parents um, some red envelopes. Um, and here in the UK, we would wait to hear the Queen's Christmas broadcast um, do, uh, for every Christmas. And um, in China, we have this kind of annual um, central TV New Year's Gala, which is very long, um, but um, it, it has been um, a tradition for years and years. So it's just very, very similar between Chinese New Year and Christmas. And um, we also have the um, Christmas market and in China traditionally we would have the temple fair um, but I assume um, this year we don't have the real actual Christmas Christmas market and instead lots of people would purchase uh, gifts um, online and um, it's the same in China lots of people would just order um, gifts uh, from online e-commerce sites um, so Chinese zodiac. Um, every Chinese New Year, um, there will be, uh, we have 12 different animals uh, representing um, Chinese zodiac, and each year there will be a new zodiac animal. Uh, for the next year, it is the year of the ox. So you can 
um, you can use this this um, table to figure out which zodiac animal is yours. And if if your birthday is like uh, January or February, um, you would your uh, your zodiac animal uh, would likely to be the earlier one. For example, if um, if your birthday is um, January 1985, <clears throat> then your zodiac animal is likely to be the rat rather than ox. Um, but you can you can check on on Google later on. And the story behind Chinese zodiac is that um, thousands and thousands of years ago, um, the Jade Emperor uh, was hosting the, the a great race. Um, uh, towards all the animals. So the first 12 animals who gets to his palace would um, would be selected as the 12 zodiac animals and in the order of who arrives first. So the ox actually was um, was the first one um, uh, in 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 the row, um, but the um, because they were they have to go through a river and the rat cannot swim, so the rat asked the ox, ox can you take me over there? And the ox said, oh, uh, sure, okay. So the the rat was standing on top of the ox um, while the ox was swimming across the river, and while they uh, they were approaching the other side of the river, the rat um, is he's very smart, obviously, um, he jumped out. So he he arrived first in the um, Jade Emperor's palace. So the ox was the second one. And you, you can see through um, the ox personalities through the story as well. So uh, what are the different things? Uh, what are special things uh, about the year of the coup? Um, um, so first of all, the personality of the ox, um, they are always hardworking. They're super reliable and responsible. Um, they are always down to earth and in the same time very modest. They could be stubborn sometimes, but they never complain. So if you are a leader, you are you are a business owner, it's always good to have your uh, some like staff who is um, born from the year of the ox. They will be the best staff you can you, you can imagine. Um, and um, Ox is also a very positive symbol in the Chinese culture. We have loads and loads of phrases um, um, associated with the ox, and um, they they always they would always describe the very positive things. For example, if it's the stock market, if it is a very good, um, uh, if if the performance is really good in the stock market, we would call it a ox market, 牛市. Um, and when the stock market performance is really, really um, bad, we will call it bear market, 熊市. And, um, um, and in Chinese, uh, in the Chinese language, 牛, uh, which is ox, is also um, associated with um, brilliant, fantastic. So if we say, um, if we, we, we speak to someone to say, wow, you are so brilliant, we would say someone is very 牛, very ox. Um, so um, I'm hoping that 2021 can bring us very, very strong and positive um, recovery in the tourism industry with um, blessing from the from the all ox and our beloved Helen Koo. And um, a small tradition um, is that if um, there is a traditional saying that if if it is your zodiac year um, and your life can be relatively eventful during the year, but there's nothing um, to scared or worried about. Um, and uh, in China, some people would wear um, underwear or sock, um, just some small stuff in red um, if, if their zodiac is, is the ox next year, just like a protection because um, we believe red is a very lucky color and um, it will scare away all the bad energy be, um, around you. Um, so just as small tips and last year, um, I know that um, or one of my friend, um, uh, he did purchase some kind of red underwear after our business briefing because um, his zodiac is uh, uh, is red. And um, uh, as far as I know, he had a really good year this year. So just a small tips to bear in mind. Um, 
And uh, in the commercial world, uh, many brands, especially luxury brands, they would produce special Chinese New Year products and collections and featuring the year's zodiac animal. So if you keep an eye on, um, on those brands like Louis Vuitton or Burberry uh, or Prada, you, you will see um, their special Chinese New Year products very soon and also as well as those cosmetics brands. And um, so, uh, as usual, here I would teach you some small phrases um, to greet, uh, to greeting um, people in during Chinese New Year. Uh, although I can't hear you, but I know you will follow um, my lead. So let's have a try. The first one is Xin Nian Kuai Le, which means Happy New Year. Um, we would we would say Xin Nian Kuai Le um, over the um, Chinese New Year, as well as uh, Hogmanay. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Xin Nian Kuai Le. And the second one is Niu Nian Da Ji. Uh, it means wish you very good luck in the year of the coup. Niu Nian Da Ji. Niu Nian Da Ji. And the, uh, the third one is um, uh, is it would work for all the businesses, which is Gong Xi Fa Tai, like wishing you have a good fortune um, in the next year. Gong Xi Fa Tai. Gong Xi Fa Tai. And if you can't follow them, uh, don't worry, you can uh, easily search um, you know, videos on YouTube or if you want a personal tutorial, you can email me in the end. And um, also, um, I here this would be my presentation, and um, I will hand over to Mar to my colleague Martin. And before that, um, let me share a video of the Chinese New Year 2020 for you to see what are the highlights um, in the Chinese New Year 2020. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. I will share the get slides back. Great, thank you. So um, I'm Martin Reynolds. I'm the project manager for um, ETAG's China Ready program. And um, thank you to everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's really great to see so many social media and China Ready partners on the call. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and for everything you do to promote um, and support Edinburgh in China. Um, and yes, we hope to uh, see you all in person very, very soon. But until then, I hope we can continue to collaborate and support you um, into 2021 with our um, Chinese New Year programme. Um, if you could go on to the next slide, please, Alice. Um, I, I won't, you've seen the video, so I won't talk to this slide for too long, but I do want to give a bit of a recap on Chinese New Year 2020 because um, it was a big success with your support, so thank you very much. Um, and it has continued to grow over time. And we think that it's still really important for us to maintain that momentum and that success into 2021, although we obviously it will be very different. Um, there were a large number of um, uh, events, dedicated promotions. There was a big increase on the previous year. So we, we believe that it's really important for supporting the city and its partners a traditionally quiet time of year. Um, and we hope to establish Chinese New Year into the cultural calendar in the same way that um, it's a highlight of the cultural calendar in many of our 
kind of competitor cities around the world who welcome the Chinese market. But as well as Chinese New Year delivering um, for sort of local businesses and the local Chinese community, it also plays a really important strategic role for the city and for ETAG and its partners. Um, so that civic engage, that's that civic engagement, that um, that international engagement is really, really important. And although this year has been extremely difficult, um, as we were heading into Chinese New Year last year, um, our, the growth of the Chinese market in the city had never been better. Um, our, the growth of Chinese visitors had continued to grow. Um, according to the latest statistics from, from Visit Scotland, um, we'd had you know 33% year on year increases. Um, it's now the fifth international, fifth largest international source market, the fourth largest for spend. Um, and as Alice said, even though um, we haven't had those visitors this year, all of our evidence and engagement on ac across our social media channels suggests that that market is still in love with Edinburgh and really keen to come back. Um, and our growth as a city is massively outperforming um, the growth of the Chinese market generally internationally. So um, we really want next year's Chinese New Year programme um, to do two things, provide a really um, responsible and optimistic kind of event to support the pandemic recovery, but also continue to safeguard our position as a really China friendly city. So when that visitors can return again, um, they uh, we're, we're, at the, uh, we're at the top of mind when it comes to thinking about long haul destinations. So um, you can read all the, the key points there, there for yourselves. It was a big success, a massive collaboration with Unique Events. Um, as well as the, um, the kind of support of the Harriet Watt University's um, uh, Confucius Institute. So thank you to everybody that was involved. Um, I'd like, now like to talk about Chinese New Year 2021 and how we'd love you to get involved again this year. So if you could flick on to the next um, couple of slides, please. And the next one. Cheers, Alice. So as Alice said, um, Chinese New Year starts on the 12th of February. Um, in the past, we have run about a two week festival to support um, the businesses and promote their events. Um, so obviously Friday the 12th of February will be the centerpiece, but we're really going to wait until we find out about all the major events before deciding on the exact window. Um, so that will really rely on um, you know, various partners coming to us with their preferred dates so we can make sure that they can be included in the festival. And, you know, obviously we want to plan a really optimistic citywide celebration, but it will be a responsible one. Obviously, it'll be in the context of social distancing and limits on mass gatherings. So it will likely take a very, very different shape to those joyful sort of um, bilingual Kayleys and large events that you saw in 2020. But nonetheless, um, we really want to use the 2021 event to um, support the city's pandemic recovery efforts and also celebrate the bridge between um, Scotland and China and we thought we were blessed last year with the Burns and uh, Chinese New Year link and so we're going to continue flying the flag for Scotland and Edinburgh by rechristening the year of the ox the year of the coup as we've said. Um, we won't obviously have large ticketed events or events to, um, to, to be highlights of this year's programme but I do want to say there are some really exciting things in the pipeline for next year. Um, some of you may have already seen um, the golden monkey that was on the side of Inverleith House. It's down now for the um, uh, the uh, Christmas at the Botanics um, light installation, but it will go back up in the new year. And that has a really, really interesting and important China connection. It was first exhibited in China um, and it is also it's a, um, a, a Chinese um, snub nosed monkey. Um, if you're watching his dark materials, it's also the demon of Mrs Coulter. So it's on TV, it's on BBC quite a lot at the moment. But it's a it's um it's a gorgeous kind of art installation with an important message because it's endangered. Um, but its habitat is in China, so it's perfect for promoting the botanics, sort of environmental and um, and and um, biodiversity sort of credentials. And that'll be back up for Chinese New Year and working, hoping to work closely with the Royal Botanics as that is a highlight. Um, Ian's already talked about this really exciting um, Ku Ox mashup installation, this life size mashup um, installation that will take place um, on the Royal Mile at the Visit Scotland Eye Centre. So we're great to be working with them. And every year the Usher Hall has a really wonderful gala for the Chinese and local community. That won't be taking place this year, but it will be going virtual. So we will have a, a virtual concert that will be organised by Jessica Guo and all of um, her colleagues at the AACCE um, to, uh, to and actually making you know 
innovating and making the most of the challenging circumstance. It'll be the first time that will be broadcast in China. So it'll be broadcast at 7 p.m. in China on um, a TV station there, and then we'll broadcast it at 7 p.m. UK time um, online on um, on the 13th of February on the Saturday. Um, so today really is about oh, and as well as as well as those installations, we're also looking at developing a Chinese New Year website and so developing you know a bit of a city map of all the China ready partners and promotions and some digital trail supporting those connections between Edinburgh and China. Um, but with the support of the Harriet Watt University's Confucian Institute now confirmed, we really want to reach out to the businesses in the city and see how you can get involved. So that's what this presentation is all about. Um, the next slide, please, Alice. So I think many of you that are on the call participated last year, so you'll recognise kind of the key, the key aspects. The one thing we're not doing for obvious reasons is a brochure, um, but there will be um, a dedicated microsite. Um, we'll develop a festival identity that, um, that again promotes this blend between Chinese and Scottish culture. We're hoping to work with um, a local um, Chinese artist who has this wonderful um, range of artworks already that called East Meets West. Um, so I love the, the tea cakes in the bamboo steamer there already. Um, and like previous, previous years, there'll be extensive PR campaign, advertising campaign. We have fantastic engagement on Weibo and WeChat channels, and we're already talking extensively to the likes of you know, Forever Edinburgh shop here this year um, and, um, and Visit Scotland to, to make sure that we're supporting and complementing existing recovery campaigns. We will do an outdoor advertising campaign as well to promote the event and drive traffic to the website and consequently all of your businesses and participating events or promotions. And although we don't have lots of Chinese visitors this year, um, we do have a substantial number of Chinese students that have arrived in the city. You've probably seen quite a few of them um, who are um, really coming out of their kind of quarantine when they arrive and really starting to make the most of their time and dis discover the city. Um, in terms of our target markets, um, Obviously, we're focusing on our local residents, the local Chinese community, local businesses. Um, this can obviously be sort of scaled up slightly and responsibly if we are able to attract regional domestic tourists. But we will just um, we'll just um, do what we can as government guidance um, and kind of recommendations allow. Um, but as I've said, I mean, it, it, it's, it is about driving footfall. It is about driving that engagement with the local market, but a big part of it as well is those um, VIPs and stakeholders. And so we've been working very closely with the Chinese consulate in Edinburgh, um, which supports our links and underpins all of those other really important kind of you know, civic um, discussions around things like, you know, air routes and funding and um, student support. So on to my last couple of slides, and this is where I, I'd really like you to all get on, get your thinking caps on. Um, Obviously, it's going to be quite difficult for people and to, to, to run events, but we still think there's there's loads of things that um, uh, city tourism businesses, hospitality businesses, cultural organisations can be doing. Here's just a, a list of 10 ideas and um, I put them up here really just as a bit of inspiration um, for you to maybe go away and have a think about what you could be doing. And it doesn't matter how big or small, um, I think it would just be fantastic if we can get as many um, businesses as possible supporting these efforts and in return doing what we can to drive some um, either online or physical footfall into your business. So um, a bit like you know Christmas as Alice's great presentation just said I mean there's so many things that can be done to kind of loosely tie with the theme so um, people could develop menus whether it's focusing on beef, Chinese influences, red or gold and um, we'd like any businesses that can to light their buildings red um, and then we'll develop a bit of a trail of the buildings online for the residents to go around and enjoy. Dublin do this to great effect. They have a, a lighting programme and then encourage families to go out and, and walk and see all the buildings lit up red. Um, we're thinking the 12th and 13th, probably the better days, the Friday and the Saturday rather than the Thursday um, for that, because obviously it's probably slightly better for the, um, the tourism side if it's at the weekend. Um, red envelopes would be quite difficult to kind of physically hand over this year, um, but you know you could still offer dedicated red envelope promotions or ho hold some kind of promotional shopping evening. So the retail side of things, the gifting side of things, is still is is really important for Chinese New Year, just like it is for us currently. Um, 
And you can, as Alice said on WeChat, you can deliver um, digital red envelopes to people with money in, but a lot of businesses are starting to use um, uh, a platform called Greenvelope, which we could potentially, you could potentially use to send um, digital messages to your database if you wanted to send Chinese New Year greetings to your newsletter list, for example. Um, if you've got museums or galleries or cultural organizations on the call, you know, it's a great time to promote any Chinese objects or influences in your displays or collections. Um, hopefully the galleries can point in the direction of some Highland coups in their Scottish collection. Um, you could hold a virtual talk. You could do some kind of China or cow or coup inspired window display. Um, we think there's potential link ups with the cow gate. Um, you could create some social media posts promoting your links to China and wishing everybody a happy Chinese New Year. Um, and we do think uh, there's some opportunities for hospitality here in terms of um, creating a, a Chinese New Year staycation product, which we could promote to our local Chinese students and communities to discover your businesses. So that's not an exhaustive list, but hopefully um, it hope helps you understand that, you know, it doesn't have to be a ticketed event. There's still lots of ways that you could um, uh, really get involved with the cow, red, gold, China, Chinese New Year theme and be part of um, this event next year. Um, so my last slide really is about timings. Uh, we've got a business briefing today. Um, if you could share um, any ideas with Alice and I um, by the end of the year, that would be uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, Alice and I are on call to, to have any discussions with you if you want to um, talk through some ideas. In early January, in early January, we'll develop this website and the campaign, which will go live in mid January. So we have um, you know, a good three or four weeks of promotional effort in the run up to Chinese New Year itself. So the big um, ask today really is for you to, to um, just think about what potentially could be done, big or small, in your businesses to team with this uh, Highland Coup Chinese New Year theme and, um, and then get in touch because we'd love to feature you. And like every um, year, that we've done this to date, largely because of um, Ian and his team support, participating and listing in this is completely free. So, you know, we'll do all the promotion and the listing for you, but it'd be great if you could come on board with developing some, some content for that um, festival activity. Um, and with that, uh, I think I'll hand back to Ian for any uh, questions. I don't know if they've been coming in, but um, thanks for your time, everybody, and really look forward to working with you all. Thanks, Martin. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the questions coming in. Uh, we haven't had any so far. I think probably everyone is uh, thinking, put, put, hopefully going to put their thinking caps on now. Um, but do uh, put any questions in the Q&A uh, bar if uh, if you've got any questions that you want us to pick up on now. I think we have, uh, we'll be making these slides and uh, the recording of this briefing available after the event. So um, hopefully that'll give you a chance to go away and think uh, about the uh, potential for ideas and uh, uh, get in touch with further, further questions. Uh, I, mean, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. Thanks uh, to, to Martin and Alice for providing that briefing, that overview for uh, for, for, for the, the, the background. And uh, it's a, yeah, it's a great opportunity for re-engaging with the community and re-engaging with the student population as well in Edinburgh, the large number of stu Chinese students within Edinburgh, um, many of whom will be staying in Edinburgh over the Christmas period and won't be able to get home. So do uh, get in touch. And uh, Martin's just put in the Q&A uh, section there the uh, follow up contacts uh, for both Martin and for Alice. Uh, we've got a question on how to, how to get in touch with proposing the idea. I think uh, getting in touch via via the via Martin or Alice's email or direct using the contact on the eTags website. And uh, a thanks to Alice and Martin for a great update and ideas for engagement. Um, and uh, thanks, uh, Julie from the Scotch Whiskey ex Experience. Uh, we look forward to having your ideas come in. 
Uh, a question from Tony from Bright Bus Tours. To whom should we address proposals? Uh, Martin, do you want to? Yeah, yeah thank, thanks. Coming so, to you. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Tony. So I've put my details in the chat. It's um, Martin at mrculturesport.com, but we'll send around all the slides and um, uh, Alison my contact details uh, straight after this meeting. So um, we'd love to hear from you. And note to self, I'll put my email on the next the last slide next time. <laughs> OK, well, thanks everybody for tuning in this morning. Um, hopefully we overcame any technical hiccups behind the scenes. Um, we hope that the briefing's given you uh, inspiration for ideas around a, a slightly different socially distanced and responsible uh, New Year celebration. I think uh, it'll be great and hopefully a colourful way to uh, virtual and, and physically colourful way to come out of a dark, dark period at the, in, over the winter uh, of the winter season. Uh, as I've said already, the recording and slides will be available uh, probably via the ETAG website and also we'll put it up on the Confucius Institute website. Um, get in touch with Martin and Alice around uh, proposals for the uh, for your ideas and equally get in touch with us at uh, the Confucius Institute if you've got any other queries on engaging with China or Chinese language or if you need to brush up on your Chinese language skills, we can help you with that. My colleagues at the Confucius Institute will be able to, to do that. Thanks once again for tuning in and we'll draw things to a close and have a good uh, rest of morning and uh, send you off to have bright, lots of bright ideas around this. And if we don't see you again, have a good Christmas. Bye for now. Thanks everyone. Keep well. Thank you. Thank you.